Welcome, Pewter Report readers and listeners, to another edition of the Pewter Nation podcast. I am Trevor Sigma, well. and with me is my good friends, Scott Reynolds, Matt Matera, and John Ledyard. We are here on this podcast, a very, very special podcast, to honor, remember, and celebrate our good friend and truly a one-of-a-kind legendary Pewter Reporter, Mark Cook. Uh, I certainly wish that we were all together again under different circumstances. I, sh I sure wish that Mark was on the other end of one of those microphones. But we are here uh, tonight, today, and hopefully for a podcast that will live on forever to really just celebrate the friend, the reporter, the family member that mark cook was and and i know that we're going to share a lot of really great stories a lot of really great memories a lot of times that we've had with mark and i appreciate everybody so much for tuning in listening to this live um whether you're listening to it then or later whatever it is i just appreciate you listening to this podcast even if it's the very first peter nation podcast you've ever listened to we really well, it's, appreciate it's the peter report it. podcast so. now trevor that's how far back you go oh, oh my but, god well <laughs> I, I had to say the classic i was gonna I say, say it's classic. perfect yeah, yeah it's perfect it's, that you said exactly that. so uh so with us tonight is is myself scott reynolds john ledyard trevor sycama where it all began you and, and mark started this this podcast matt mcterry you were the producer and now you're you're damn you're one of the hosts man so uh so that that's awesome so welcome to our our Mark Cook tribute show. We're going to spend the next hour or so remembering Mark, the legendary Peter reporter, otherwise known as the ginger badass. And tonight there's not going to be any commercials. There's not going to be any super chats. Please do not give us super chats tonight. We appreciate the super chats when we get them for Bucks reporting and Bucks coverage, but this is this is a night just for Mark. And if you if you want to um, you know to to remember Mark um, financially. The GoFundMe is in the YouTube description. Yes, for the show. and yeah, this is the link right there. But as John said, it's also in the in the description. We posted it several times on our Twitter page. I'm happy to report that as of right now, it is nearing twenty thousand dollars. Crazy, um, insane. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. So thank you so much. You know for that. Um, the family appreciates that. Um, I've reached out to uh, to, to Daisy Charlotte, the love of his life. Um, uh, uh, Aaron, the mother of, of his son, Douglas, Douglas himself, they're, they're all doing this as well as could be expected under these very difficult circumstances. Uh, the, the Peter Report staff, well, we're, we're hanging in there too. It's, it's, been, it's been a rough um, couple of days, and, and certainly uh, it, it's been, it was rough covering that game, you know, without, without Mark. The last time we covered a Bucks game, guys, it was the Super Bowl, and um, – you know, he was there in the stands, which was awesome. So mm -hmm. um, the, the only commercial we might do tonight is mycookie.ag. <laughs> we might do that. But, um, but he, here's the thing. We're, uh, we're going to talk about, about Mark. The, the thing about Mark that everybody should know is that, um, you know, um, he helped train the Peter Report staff. That's kind of his job. So whether it was, you know, the old guys – the new crew, you know, that, that was kind of his job. And, um, you know, one thing I would like to do at, at, at some point um, is, is you know, to, I do have a Chuck Berry story I'd like to share. If, you if gotta, I could. Well, you got to you, you have to wait for the Chuck Berry story till the end, Scott. We got to We have to save that one. for Of the course. Berry. OK, you can't you can't do the Chuck Berry story right off the top. We, no, we, no, no, no. I wasn't going to do it right now, okay, but, but I, I just got to wait. We got to wait. On. I it's a long like show. It's a long show. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. So if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast, I encourage you to watch it on our Peter Report uh, TV YouTube channel instead because we're going to have a lot of pics of Mark tonight. So, um, you know, Trevor, in, in Mark's honor, um, you know, we're going to go old school, you know, because really uh, the, the thing about Mark is he started um, the Peter Report podcast. It was called the Peter Nation podcast back yes. then. So. Yes. So uh, we're, we're going to do that. We're going to be um, talking about some of the, the fun memories that we've had on the show, the Chuck Berry story, which I'm going to have a chance to retell. Um, Def Leppard crop tops that Mark <laughs> used to wear. Um, <laughs> Judai, Bur uh, Judai J. Burima, who he really wanted to fight until I told, told Jude about that. And then 
Mark all of a sudden didn't really necessarily want to fight Jude. Uh, flare guns, which that was probably the best uh, commercial run that we we had, um, you know, promoting um, <laughs> but the flare guns and all of the fishing and boating equipment at TA Mahoney's. Um, and then, of course, Mark's arrest um, with his, his mug shot. Um, many of you didn't know that, that Mark had been arrested before. What a haircut. Oh, yeah. my Lord. Yeah. But the <laughs> thing about haircut. Yeah. And, and as, as you can see, Mark's name is Mark Johan Cook. Um, he was very proud of that arrest because he got arrested for fishing without a license in Hillsborough County. It's <laughs> awful crime. I'm glad he reformed himself. Um, <laughs> although I don't know if he ever got a fishing license after that. The guy did a lot of fishing. And I don't think he ever had the license on him. So um, we're here to, um, you know, to honor um, our, our friend, um, a great Bucks reporter, trusted friend, the first friend that I ever made in the state of Florida. Um, Mark Cook was my friend for, for 27 years, and um, it's a long time. I, I met Mark in the summer of 1994, and we started working together on a game day basis for Buccaneer Magazine for over a decade. Then, then we hired him full-time about 10 years ago to be our third writer on, on the, the staff. Uh, on the first day of training camp that year, Charlie Campbell, who was the editor in chief at the time, gave me his two weeks' notice <laughs> on first day training camp. No lie. Oh, I so, that. so Mark instantly got promoted to editor in chief two weeks later, and he joked with me, "Wow, I must have made a great first impression to get promoted in two weeks." You know, <laughs> um, and of course he knew that it was by default, but <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, he ended up earning that that uh, title for sure. As he told me so often, he couldn't believe that a small town kid from Lithia Pinecrest, who grew up covering the Buccaneers, got to cover the team he loved. Um, you know, it was only fitting that um, his final game here on earth was the Super Bowl, and he was right there in the stands with the fans, right there with you guys, mm -hmm. his people, to watch that magical night. So first off, a little bit about Mark. Uh, as I said, he helped the Peter Report staff um, train them all. He helped grow our company from a magazine to an online media empire, we're going to hit over 2 million unique visitors this year. So, um, you know, he, he helped us forge media partnerships with News Channel 8, with WDAE. I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen him on TV and, and heard him on the radio for so many years. Um, as I mentioned, he's starting the, started the Monday Morning Mailbag and the Peter Report podcast, which, which are going to live on in, in his memory. Um, Mark loved his job. He loved covering the Bucks, and the Bucks loved him. They just did. He was he was a fixture in the locker room. Um, Chris Conti, Jameis Winston, uh, Demar Dotson, you know, uh, Tanner Hudson, Ryan Griffin, some old school guys, Rondé Barber, Ali Marpet, Mike Evans, and then uh, you know his favorite guy, Warren Sapp. His favorite Buccaneer of all time, which is crazy, right? Because you would think Derek Brooks or Warwick Dunn, him being a Seminole, but it was actually Warren Sapp. Um, they they first formed a bond over over some dip. I think it was over some Copenhagen. And um, <laughs> sounds about right. Yeah, and uh, and it, it kind of grew from there. This was a picture that we took in London a couple years ago. Mark and I went to to London to cover the Bucks Panthers game, and <laughs> we're walking through Hyde Park in London, right? City of 2 million people. And who do we see in London of all places just walking through the park was Warren Sapp, somebody we've obviously known and run into plenty of times. Um, and he, Warren stopped and chatted with us for 30 minutes, just about the Buccaneers present and past. Mark loved it. And he, Mark, and Warren said, how about a picture? So we got a picture. And of course, Warren covered up the Florida state hat that Mark always wore um, for the picture, which was really cool. With another, another guy that, that, yep. uh, that Mark was close with was was Alan Cross, his doppelganger. His Can't tell who's who in that picture. I, I know, <laughs> right? His his, his long lost son. I think mean, Douglas probably didn't know he had a brother until he met Alan Cross. <laughs> but um, you know, so he he loved uh, covering the team. There's a lot of guys that just had a ton of respect for Mark. Uh, you, you know, the, uh, Gene Deckerhoff. I mean, that was like a that was like a, a double dip for Mark, right? Because Gene Deckerhoff, the voice of the Seminoles and the Buccaneers, mm -hmm. those guys were great friends. So uh, it was awesome. And, you know, the thing is, everybody loved Mark, right? I mean, Mark didn't have any enemies. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can be kind of an ass sometimes. People probably don't like me, but everybody liked Mark. Um, the, the, the one thing, the only thing that I that I knew of that Mark hated was, you know, was was the Gators. <laughs> you know, just Charlie Belcher wearing his Gators hat, and of course Mark with that. Trevor, real quick, um, you know, talk about your Gator Florida State feud that you guys had. It started really from the beginning, did it not? Yeah. Yeah, no, it did. And um, I, I posted this on Twitter, and so people may have read this story before, but I'll tell it again for every, anybody who's listening that may not have heard it. When I got hired on at, at Peter Report, uh, I got hired on through a pretty quick interview process with Scott. And I actually never was able to interview with Mark. I think he was supposed to be there at one or two of them, but he just couldn't make yeah. it. And so it ends up being, I get hired at Peter Report. And you know, Mark obviously knows that I'm joining the team and everything. It's not like it was that blindsided by it, but yeah. my first day on the job. Okay. This is my first full-time writing gig out of college, like getting to cover the Buccaneers. I'm from that area of Florida. Like, it, like it was a dream job for Mark. It was a dream job for me getting to be in this opportunity. And so my first day on the job, I go to one buck place, open locker room. Scott's there early. So it's me and Scott and we go into the locker room. Mark was getting there a little bit later. So we're around, we're talking to players and everything. And I see Mark come in. I know what he looks like because I've you know, seen his picture on social media and everything. And I see him come in. And this is my editor, right? And, and this is my first like full-time real gig in the industry. And so I wanted to make a really great impression. Uh, I think I dressed up way nicer than I needed to that day uh, because I was just like, I wanted to make the best impression on everybody I possibly could. And I end up walking up to him stick out my hand, said, Mark, I'm Trevor. It's very, very nice to meet you. I'm so excited to be on the team. I'm so excited to get to work alongside you. I've only heard great things. He looks me up and down, sees my Florida Gators hat, stone face, just goes, go Knowles. That's it. That's what he said. And I was like, I was so taken back. And it was, uh, I, I would then learn over the next, three, four, five years of, of working together with him and, and years after that, that that was exactly Mark and that was the best way and that was the perfect way that it could have started. And so that was, yeah. I will always, I will always be able to carry that memory of, of that's how everything started between Mark and I. Yeah, no doubt. Now the, the thing with Mark is, you know, he, he loved football from really guys from the beginning. I mean, there's, mm-hmm. there's, there's Mark playing Pee Wee for, for Pinecrest back in the day. His love for the Buccaneers started in, in 1977, but you know, um, a lot of our readers knew Mark and his love for the Buccaneers. But um, he, you know, he had he had some other loves. What what he loved more than football was actually his family and, and fishing. <laughs> yep. Um, which which he did often with his family. There's there's Mark and his son Douglas, especially his son Douglas. Those two fished, um, you know, and and fished. Um, but the thing is, Douglas also played football. So it was great that they had those passions, those shared common passions uh, together, uh, fishing and football. I mean, that, that really, um, uh, you know, he, he was just big time in, into those activities. You know, uh, uh, there's, there's Douglas uh, playing for Durant High School, started off as a kicker, ended up as a linebacker. Um, it was Mark's uh, uh, wife, uh, Aaron, um, and he... Uh, um, you know, it, it was, it was great seeing, um, Douglas play football, graduate from high school. He was an absolutely proud papa, you know, and, um, then, um, you know, Douglas kind of came full circle. Mark took him out to the pro bowl, got him credentialed, you know, so from, from going from peewee to high school oh, and then to, you know, to, to wow. helping cover the team, you know, and just Mark was all about family. And, um, you know, there's, there's Larry Cook um, and, and Douglas and Mark, three generations right there. Um, you know, it, it, was, it was awesome. Speaking of, of family, he had, uh, you know, he was, he was in love with Daisy Charlotte, you know, um, after the divorce. They, they, they really um, just were a fantastic couple. She was the spark mm. um, that ignited his flame. And... Um, and, and really, the, over the last couple of years, Mark was so happy. They enjoyed sunsets together, a lot of time at the beach. They, um, 
did a lot of traveling. They enjoyed each other's company. They were best friends who happened to be madly in love with each other. Daisy made Mark smile, and he returned the favor. Mm -hmm. Mark passed away from a heart attack on Thursday at age 50, and we'll miss him terribly. And we'll carry on with the mailbag and the podcast uh, at, at Peter Report in his memory. Mark will be seeing some special people again in heaven. His mama, his idol, Tom McEwen from the Tampa Tribune, who played a big role in getting Mark into journalism. Leroy Selman, one of Mark's all-time favorite players. And there'll be some um, some people that he'll meet in heaven, some of his all-time favorites he'll meet for the first time. Ricky Bell, Southern writer Louis Grizzard, Elvis Presley, Ronnie Van Zant of Leonard Skinner, Buddy Holly, Charlie Daniels, Bobby Bowden. Um, the, th the funny thing about Mark is we had a dress code at Peter Report, and Mark never really adapted to that too much. You'd always see him in a in a surfer hat. He was a surfer guy at heart. Volcom, Rip, uh, Rip Curl, Hurley, O'Neal. That's just kind of who Mark was. And what I loved about Mark was he never smiled for pictures. You know, like the, that's Mark's smile right there. That's a pretty good yeah. one there. That's, that's like the that's, most yeah, I've seen smile in a picture. Yeah. Exactly. Because he he loved the old school, Clint Eastwood, mm -hmm. badass. He's like, they didn't smile back in the day, Scott. I'm like, I know, I know, I know. Um, but uh, but sometimes, you know, um, Mark Mark did smile. Um, <laughs> he he was he was a personality man. He he was he was the personality of the report. Um, that, that's that's in the the media workroom. Um, you take his hat off, and his hair would just go crazy. And uh, he would always buy me Wichamacallits. It's my favorite candy bar. And and I would ask him, I'm like, you know, are you buying this just out of the generosity uh, or are you just sucking up to me because I'm the boss? And he'd say both. <laughs> so, so this one day, um, Mark took a picture of Wichamacallit, um, and I didn't make it to one buck in your place. And he, and he sent it to me. And he said, uh, he said, hey, I, I got you a Wichamacallit, you know, today. I was like, oh, well, thanks. I appreciate that. I always got the king size because Mark wanted me to get the big one and um but then i didn't make it the next day i think it was sick this was years and years ago and and all of a sudden uh he sends me this picture and he's like hey i ate your whatchamacallit <laughs> so <laughs> that's just kind of how mark was he was he was a trip that way and of course we could never forget that um you know his bromance with nick carter you know <laughs> he, he loved nick carter nick carter loved him matter of fact nick carter called me um, the night he passed away, which was really cool. Um, you know, that was a great, um, moving gesture by Nick. Um, yeah, he met Nick a couple times, I believe, after Backstreet Boys concerts. Um, and then, you know, Jason Light and, and Mark and I had a really good working relationship together. Um, this was taken at a Buccaneer event. This was taken in the stands at Mobile. Um, the funny story behind this is, is, Adam. <laughs> is, is, um, Mark had really, really cold feet and hands and Mark has like two hand warmers. He's wearing a, a hoodie. And the funny thing is it usually rains in Mobile, right? And everybody's been to Mobile, everybody on mm -hmm. this podcast. Yeah. And the yeah. thing with Mark is, is he never like brought the proper attire for Mobile. He always complained about how cold it was. And even aside from like like a hoodie, he never really <laughs> brought a whole bunch. So this was in the pouring down rain in the stands at Mobile, and Mark found this poncho. And Jason Light walks up to him and he, he says something like, I love your hobo motif or something like that. <laughs> hobo so, chic. Yeah, hobo chic, exactly. So, and of course, Mark just rolled with it because the thing is, is Mark, Mark made fun of himself, and, and he did that so often. And you had to laugh at that because if not, he was going to make fun of you. Um, that's just kind of who he was, but, but, um, the thing too is, is, is Mark, Mark really had, um, you know, and it, when, when, when I say this, um, you know, <laughs> I, I took pictures of Mark and, and the thing about this is, is Mark could fall asleep at the drop of a hat. I mean, like I, I was so jealous cause I, I have a hard time going to bed sometimes. That's in the media workroom. That's Mark. Just like, you can see Jenna Lane back there at, you know, I think that's Pat Donovan in the back of his head. Here's Mark just, you know, boom, siesta, like instant siesta. Uh, in this other picture to the right, that's in London. Of course, 
you got to forgive Mark there a little bit because neither one of us slept on the plane. That's a long plane right over there. But uh, um, so, you know, I, I, I had to, to kind of poke fun at Mark as he would do the same for me. So, but the thing is, is, um, you know, he had a, um, you know, a, a great relationship with this guy, Bruce Arians. And the thing about Jason and Bruce is, is Mark and I, we watched a lot of bad football together, a lot. And all you Buccaneer fans were right there for it. And we covered it for you guys. And it wasn't fun and it wasn't pretty. And we tried to sell some hope, some hopium, uh, some years, and it just didn't work out until this guy came around, thanks to Jason hiring Bruce Arians. And when they hired Bruce, Mark and I were at that press conference, and we looked at each other and we said, God, I think this is going to be it. I think I think this this coach and this staff is going to turn it around. And, uh, you know, Mark actually got – we've only had Bruce Arians on the podcast twice. And I've only um, – I've, you know, got a great relationship with Bruce, but for whatever reason, I – well, I've, I've not been able to be on the podcast with, with Bruce. It's always been Mark. I think it was Mark. Um, might have been you and, and – yeah, it was uh, it was Taylor and I and Mark yeah, yeah, for that right. one. Yeah, and then and then the more recent one um, was uh, was was with John, and of course uh, this is just classic Mark. Coach, right here. here, I mean, look, I mean, I'm I'm you know I'm almost as old as you are now. Now I don't have quite the gray, but it won't be long, so I'm, I'm not no, far no, off. You, you're looking fantastic, brother. The hat and the shirt. All right. All right. Perfect. And the glasses too. <laughs> the glasses too. Well, I'm uh, I'm Bruce Arians Jr. Don't tell Jake that though. He might get yes. mad. That's, that's <laughs> cool. right. Jake's gonna watch this and think he has another sibling here. But uh, Mark is looking pretty fresh today on the podcast. So um, you know that's um, that's um, that's that's classic Mark right there. You know he he was an absolute character. We loved him dearly. We miss him dearly. Um, you know, he um, he brought a lot of fun to Peter Report, um, a, a lot of fun times to our Peter Report podcast. And I'm, I'm glad that, that uh, you know, last year we got to go video so people could see Mark's humor and not just hear it. Um, but, uh, you know, um, um, we're going to be having some, some guests come on uh, here in just a little bit. We've got, uh, uh, we're trying to get, we have several people, I guess, uh, in in the in the waiting deck here. John, if if you can share a, a, a few of your memories with Mark, and we're going to bring on Jenna Lane from ESPN, who was very close with Mark. Mm -hmm. But John, if you could, yeah, I think the biggest thing for me with Mark was this crazy. We talked every day for like a year and a half, but because I, so much of that I was in Pennsylvania for, and then when even when I moved down here, you know, COVID was such a factor still that. Even though we talked daily, we actually only spent time in the same space physically about five times probably. Yeah. Um, and I remember leaving all of those times wishing that we'd been able to spend more time in the same space because he was – I mean, to text with, to talk with was great. The humor was always there. He was always bringing it. But it was just another thing to be alongside him, man. I mean, you just ne never knew what he was going to do, what he was going to say, entertaining as heck, always with the wisecracks and – um, the biggest thing that Mark taught me, honestly, is that, uh, you can do whatever in this business and work as hard as you can and, you know, have longevity at a place for forever, whatever, but it'll always be about people. It was always about people with Mark. Like, I don't think he ever, you're showing the pictures with Warren Sapp and Alan Cross and all these guys. I don't yeah. think Mark ever went into a locker room and thought, man, I hope I get breaking news out of an interaction with a player today, or, you know, or, oh, I can't, I'm going to, I'm trying this line of questioning to see what info I can dig up. I think yeah. he just wanted to like re build relationships with people. Like yeah. he just cared a ton about that. That was where he put so much time and energy. He knew everybody, he treated everybody well. Um, yeah, he just loved people. And man, like I am, I was telling Trevor this on the phone. We were talking after Mark's passing, and I was like, I'm just such an agenda driven person, like uh, naturally. Um, that I think the biggest thing I'll ever learn from him and the biggest thing that I'll carry with me from Mark was just like slow down and not have it always be about the work and make sure that in the process you're loving people, you're caring for people, you're checking in on people. Um, you know, you're seeing how they're doing anytime any one of us got sick. It was a laundry list of advice and yeah. things you should take and places you should go. And if this happens, do this and call your doctor of this. If our kids got sick, anything like he was always checking in. How's this going? You know, that was, 
yeah. his reactivity to that was incredible to watch how much he cared. Like I said, for somebody in, in my case, who had only spent time in the same actual space a handful of times, you know, even though we talked all the time, um, it was just, it was moving to me. It was something that I will always carry with me because it's not naturally always how I am. And I need to be more like that. Um, and Mark just exemplified that so well in everything that he did. And there's no greater testimony than that, than all the fans that have talked and spoken. And, and, and that's been the most moving part of this is seeing how well and how beautifully he'll be always be remembered by Bucks fans. Yeah, you're exactly right. And John, you guys had some, some, uh, some comedy between you two as well. Number right. 10 on my list. Um, yeah, I don't think he's a player that many people know, but he's a player that uh, I remember from when I was very young, like six or seven, maybe he didn't play with the bucks very long, but he was, I just remember him. He was just really impressive to me. And his name is Alvin Harper. And I just think he was, just <laughs> I almost, <laughs> Hang on. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> you, you got me on that one. You got me on that one. Now you got to tell me. I'm, I had to go to Scott and I said, who's a Bucks player that Mark just like, oh. would just freak out if I put him oh. on the list? He said, he said, you got to tell Melvin Harper. Yeah. That was, that was hilarious. I love teaming up with you to, to get Mark like that, John. Um, some that of was, the, some of the best moments that I have at Peter report are when Scott, you and I made Mark high pitch laugh. Like he, like oh. he kind of did there just like the, we're like, he can't talk and he's talking like I was going to bring that up. The stuttering. I, it's just, it's, it's, it's like, it was yeah. truly one of the most like unique, one of a kind human being things that made Mark Mark that, uh, you know, like when people ask me what some of my favorite memories are, it'll be those times when we made each other laugh so hard that, he'd get that high pitched laugh and it would just make everybody else in the room. Just, Oh, uh, just, it was just, it was, it was his way of, of just enjoying the moment that I will always, always remember about Mark. Anytime he got to that high pitched laugh, it automatically had everyone in tears. It didn't oh, matter yes. what yeah, we were laughing doubt, without about. Without and the problem, not a problem, but a lot of the times for the podcast, before we went live and went on YouTube, we would have to restart the show at least like two or three times because we were all <laughs> laughing about something beforehand. I mean, you got to remember, Mark would not start off the show saying, welcome, Peter Port readers and listeners. He would start off by grunting and going and clearing his throat going mm, 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 yes. and like do that for like five minutes, which yeah. it was funny. But in my head, I'm like, damn it, I have to edit all of this out to start the show. Yeah. But uh, like it just it got everyone in a great mood to to start things off. Yep. And, you know, that's just one of the, the many things I remember about Mark. Exactly. John, we're going to bring Jenna Lane from ESPN on. If you could, can you uh, pump up some of our, our comments in the bottom? Go through those and uh, for sure. And, and let our readers, uh, uh, readers, listeners and viewers to the Peter Report podcast uh, chime in with their thoughts on Mark as well. For sure. Last thing I'll say is that Mark. I know you're listening to this pod. I'm I'm sorry I didn't rank Leroy Selman high enough in my all time greatest box. <laughs> I, I know I let you I know I let you down. Forgive me for that. Yeah. I know I let you down and you'll probably never forgive me for that one, but I'm asking for it anyway. Appreciate you, buddy. Love you, buddy. Jenna Lane. Hello. From ESPN. Hi, How are you? How are you guys doing? I should be asking that. It's been rough. I know the last several several days for me. So I can only imagine what it's like for you guys. I, I still can't believe, I know Scott, you were not in the press box for the game, but um, I'm still blown away by the way that this group pulled together. And I yeah. was checking in on you guys throughout the game yeah. and, and it just, it blows my mind how you guys were able to pull together during such an emotional time. And cause I know for me several times during that game, I broke down crying because Mark is like, he's always been one of the first people that, will greet me or greet anybody in the press box when you come in there and to not see him and then to look down at his chair and to see that it was empty, even yeah. though the Bucks did everything. And my gosh, like I've been so blown away by, by how just how much they've cared and all the ways that they've done things mm -hmm. to really convey how much they loved him and appreciated him. Cause like we all loved him and appreciated him. And it feels so weird saying all of this past tense, Yeah, 
but like to see the way that they love and appreciated him that and knowing how much this team has always meant to him um that that brings me some level of peace but it's been hard so i've just been thinking about you guys and praying for you guys when i'm not seeing you at practice and stuff so yeah yeah we appreciate that very much jenna you know he um you know it, your tributes on twitter meant a lot to me i know they meant a lot to mark and to, to you know daisy and and the whole cook family um you know uh, he well, Mark's one of those words of affirmation guys. So whenever you, you know, anybody wanted to, to gush about Mark Cook, he, he loved it. He ate every bit of it up. So, um, you know, that that's fantastic. And, and the thing about Mark is as much as he loved receiving, he loved giving twice as much. Um, he was legendary um, for feeding the entire media. Um, each Thanksgiving, like, like the day before Thanksgiving, uh, he would, his idea, not mine. Uh, all, all I did was just get the, you know, give the blessing for it in terms of, um, it's like, Hey, do you mind if I had a Bricados or you mind if I, if I hit a Holy hog barbecue and have them cater this? I, absolutely. Mark reach out. You know, the one thing I did was just help him carry some food in from his trunk because <laughs> he would go get it too. But he, he, he would feed the entire media workroom, um, just out of the goodness of his, of his heart. And, and, uh, that's, that's just who he is who he was and who he always will be is, is someone who loved and cared and thought of others before he thought of himself. And he wanted you to feel part of the family. Cause I can remember full disclosure here. Like, so I, I, Scott, you know, I used to work mm -hmm. at Peter report years ago yeah. and then I got let go. So we've all been through that, you know, yeah. not just Mark, we've all been through it. And I remember being nervous to go back into the media workroom a little bit, just because you don't know how it's going to go. But within like seconds i i had made this wonderful friendship with mark who i didn't know before and it was like i felt so welcomed because he has this way of just making you pe like feel part of the family i'm talking about him in present tense because it's still very hard for me to process this but it was like all these you know when these national reporters would come in or when these interns would come in from different outlets he would take them all under his wing and you know give them the lay of the land and, and ask them if they needed anything and made sure that you know, they felt welcome and they felt like they were part of the family. And and so like on Thanksgiving when he did that, and I think the reason it, it has always meant so much to me too is because I've always worked for outlets where I would often be the only person from my outlet there. So like I would, I see you guys more than I see my own ESPN coworkers and stuff. And so it can be a little lonely sometimes if you don't, you know, kind of step outside your yourself and and talk to other people and and really you know get to know other people around you and you know i think that mark is such a great lesson in being able to do that like yes we all compete against each other i guess if you you'd say that at at, at work but the friendship and the camaraderie is so much greater than that and mark was mark is one of those people where I swear to you, like your victories meant more to him than his own personal victories. Like yeah, he would 100%. be the first person, like if you had a really good story and he could tell you put a lot into it and it didn't matter who, it didn't matter who it was, he would be first to come up to you and say like, way to go, or if you broke something. And it was so wonderful and so rewarding to be able to like do that back, you know, to him because he had so many stories that it was just like, you knew he poured his heart and his soul into it. And he was able to like, reach back into that bag of, I guess, you know, where he kept all his fanhood all these years. Cause you know, of course he was a big Bucks oh, yeah. fan before he did that. And, and that's what made his writing. Um, and then you heard it of course, when he did the podcast, when he was on the radio, when he did television, you could feel that passion and that's, that's where he pulled it from. And I just felt like it really separated him from, from everybody. But like, he's, he just has always been the most supportive person for me. And like, I've just, as I'm starting to process this all, I'm just trying to figure out ways, like what can I do to honor him? How can I, how can I be the type of person, the type of friend that he was to all those around him? Because like, I, I am a better person for having him in my life. Daisy said the same thing. She's like, I am a better person for having met Mark Cook. And I told her, I said, I remember the moment he met you, the light went on in his eyes and, and I could tell he's in love with her. I, I mean, I could see it, I could feel it. Yeah. Um, but, but in conversations with, with Daisy and with his dad, Larry, like, I'm just trying to figure out ways, like, how can I honor him? Because for whatever reason he was taken from us and it really isn't fair, but it's like, what can I do? And, and I know that one of the things he was talking to Larry and Daisy about was, um, 
being a guardian ad litem. And like for me, I texted Coach Arians right away when I read his obituary. It would it went up like 20 minutes before this online. And I was like, I, I was like bawling my eyes out because his final act on this earth, what he wanted, what he has in an ob his obituary is mm -hmm. in lieu of flowers, uh, donations can be made to the Arians Family Foundation. That's how much Mark Cook cared about helping other people and helping mm -hmm. foster children. The fact that that's, that's who he wanted to help. And I just told Coach Arians, I'm like, I've lost it. And I said, I didn't know if you were aware of this, but I mean, he was just so blown away by it. His son, Jake, who hadn't heard um, you know, he's, he's having a really hard time with it too, but there, I mean, that just, that just shows you though, like what just a caring person Mark was. So it's like, I've, I've been thinking, you know, what can I do? Like I foster children is something like caring for them is very close to my heart too. So it's like, okay, I, I need to make more time and my life to give back to that area. I feel like that's the best way that a lot of us, especially folks, you know, I've seen like the donations pouring in for Mark's family. I know some yeah. people aren't in a position to do that. You want to know another way you can honor Mark and his life and his legacy is, is you know, try to be the type of, of, of person that Mark would be proud of with these kids. You know, try to make a difference in the life of a lot of these kids because they need it in the foster care system. And imagine if they all had angels like Mark, the way right. Mark was with his son, Douglas, how much better this world would be. Because above all the things that we've talked about, all the great things that we've talked about, he was a damn good father and I know it wasn't easy. And he had a lot of, of things that he had to do. Um, I'm sure a lot of pain, you know, that he had to, you know, try to break, you know, a lot of walls he had to break down with Douglas, you know, because he adopted Douglas and, yep. and, you know, the kids that, that are in the foster care system go through so much, but Mark was such a devoted and committed father and, and everything he did was for Douglas. And it's like, if we could all have someone in our lives like that, I mean, this world would be such a different place. So, you know, I, if, 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 if you're wondering how you can, how you can honor Mark's life, what, what can you do next? Um, to me, that's, that's the best way to do it is, is to yeah. try to be the, the type of person Mark was. You're, you're exactly right. One thing that Mark told me, and you're right, you know, Mark, uh, Mark and, and Aaron adopted Douglas. Um, and if you look at that picture, you would not know. They look so much alike. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. You, you could, you could you could say uh, Douglas looks like Mark. Douglas looks like Aaron. You know, that's, oh, yeah. that's, I thought that for the longest yeah. time. Me too. And, 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 and the thing is, is, is that what Mark would tell me is the Lord works in mysterious ways. You know, he, he gave Douglas to us, you know, it wasn't naturally, but it was, it was through adoption. But, but uh, you, you know, there's, there's such a resemblance there. It's, it's scary. And, uh, you know, please, please pray for, for Douglas, for Daisy, um, for, for Aaron, for Larry, for, for the entire Cook family, for, for Mark's, you know, sister, uh, Julia, for, I mean, it, there's a lot of people hurting out there that, that need your prayers and support. And, and Jenna, we thank you so much for coming on and sharing that, that about, about Mark and, and for your touching tweets too. I mean, that, that, um, the, the pictures, you know, um, that you shared and, and your memories, um, were, were awesome. They really, um, were very moving and I, I can just thank you so much for, for being a great friend to Mark. It was really easy though, right? It was really easy to be Mark's friend because he was oh, yeah. always, you know, your friend. Oh, he, I mean, he would always tell me, you're like my sister and he was like a brother to me. And it's just, I feel so fortunate to have had someone in my corner. You know, what's crazy too is, is after he was let go, um, I, I had, you know, tweeted some things about him and he told me that I had made him tear up. And I'm thinking to myself, my gosh, all the times he said such kind things to me to make me tear up. But, um, you know, I, there, there's, if there's one thing that kind of gives me peace, it was that he told me, man, I am so blessed. And I just, I have so many, I'm so lucky to have so many people in my corner. Yeah. And it was like, I'm glad that he got to hear those kind things being said about him while he was still on this earth. You know, yes. things happen for a reason. And I know I heard you say that was the most difficult decision you've ever had to make the grace and the class that he handled that situation with, I, I, I hope and pray that we all can be like that. Yeah. Um, because never was there a bad, you know, any, nothing bad, you know, came out of his mouth. He was focused on the next opportunity and he cared so much for this group, but it, it just, it really just, that's the one thing that's giving me peace right now is that, that he was able to hear all the people saying all I these kind things totally about him. Agree. Yeah, and he I loved totally you agree. guys. He loved you guys so much. And I'm just, 
it's just so wonderful that you guys have such a great family and that, you know, you guys loved and, and cared for him, you know, because a lot did. of times, yeah, it's a lot of times people put that out there, but they don't get it in return, but you could yeah. tell it was, it was, it was reciprocated. And, you know, I, I thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to come on here and I feel like I'm rambling and everything, but um, I haven't made an ugly cry face. So that's, that's good. <laughs> that was one of my goals. Cause you yeah, guys no, don't want to see that. I'm, biting the inside of my mouth a couple times to try to stop the tears. But uh, Jenna, greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you, Jenna. Thanks, Thank Jenna. you so much, guys. I love Absolutely. you. I'm thinking about you. I know I'll see some of you soon. Um, but yep, I, uh, I, I love you guys. And we're all going to get through this together. Jenna, thank you, you Jenna. so much. Love you. See you soon. Now we've got uh, a very familiar face um, to us, maybe not to to the, the Pewter Report uh, readers out there, but a guy who was really behind the scenes, started off as, a, as an intern in high school with Pewter Reports. Uh, we didn't tell anybody that because you were technically, you weren't allowed to, to do what you did in <laughs> high school. But back in the day, we can get away with it. So. Um, Eric Delarada is with us. Um, uh, Eric was a, a vital member of, of People Report. He was an intern in high school, also in college when he went to Florida Gulf Coast. Um, yeah, I had I had some awesome awesome times with People Report, starting all the way um, myself and Andrew Scavelli, um, yeah. all the way back from Palm Harbor University High School. Um, had some awesome times. Got to meet one of the few. Um, the few PHU alumni, Ted Larson, um, yeah, <laughs> and Mark introduced me to Ted Larson. Um, it, it's it's things, it's things like that. Uh, Mark was always so good um, uh, with making me feel comfortable in the locker room. A lot of times, um, I wasn't the most outgoing. wasn't I was a little bit timid, shy. Mark uh, really broke me out of my shell uh, a lot of times um, during those locker room sessions after practice was over, um, things like that. And I just remember. Um, when I first, you know, met Mark, it was at training camp, that training camp that Scott uh, mentioned earlier, you know, he showed up in his, you know, rip curl shirt and, and his, uh, Volcom hat and, and the whole nine yards. And, um, I'm a born and raised Florida guy and, and Mark definitely was, was the same way. And, uh, we just started talking about fishing. It had nothing to do with the bucks. It was just like, I knew he was a fisherman. I knew he was a surfer. I could just tell immediately. Um, so he, he actually told me about his fishing spots like mm -hmm. no no fisherman gives away their fishing spots except but, this guy right but except mark cook so yeah. um so yeah so he told me all about anna marie island i really had never even gone down there we had great right. times talking about that stuff um but he was well, a relationship he, builder and, and also too i mean you're not in this picture but it, but he was a guitarist he loved music you love music you guys bonded over that too absolutely yeah mark um he he even to this day with the stuff that I'm making now, um, just personally, with, um, he would always comment on my Instagram stuff, you know, saying great job, you know, give, give me kudos. And, you know, I haven't worked for, for Peter Report for roughly like six years now. And he's, he's still reaching out to me. He was still reaching out all the time. Um, he was just a great friend and, and somebody um, I really looked up to. Mark was a role model for me, um, especially in the, in uh, the career aspect, um, you know, going to the, the practices every day, he's somebody that, you know, he would just go up to somebody and make a great relationship with them. And I strive for that every single time I went to the, to those open locker rooms and to one book. So, um, so those are the things I, I definitely take from Mark for sure. But there's, I mean, even as a, uh, a Peter Report fan, after um, I left as an intern, y'all with the radio show, the, the, with the, the Peter Report podcast, I mean, I was dying laughing. Just at, <laughs> I can think of so many things. Um, but specifically the one I remember, um, and mostly cause I showed my dad the other day, cause my, my dad never had a relationship with Mark. Um, but yeah. we, I had talked to him a few times. So I was like, dad, you got to listen to this one where he talks about this deaf leopard shirt. Um, it, the whole deaf leopard story about him getting this half shirt with his name airbrushed and the whole thing. He, he, he did that wheezy like laugh that you guys were talking about earlier right and my dad had never met this guy never heard anything he did and we were both dying laughing on friday night re-listening to that uh that podcast i i just i i just had so many good laughs from the podcast him talking about how he was going to get financial advice um or like what he needed to what predicament he had to get out of for yes. financial advice i mean yeah. the flare gun i mean yeah just, 
I mean, the, it's just unbelievable some of the stuff he would come up with. Uh, yeah. And and specifically too, going to some of this humor stuff. We had so some of the best times of my life were those car rides to Mobile. Um, oh my gosh, those were legendary. Oh my, so many if, amazing if we moments. had documented those on YouTube, we would have a hell of a lot more subscribers than we need right now. <laughs> those were <Yeah>. legendary. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we started off, you know, we'd always start with some music it would, and that was honestly like how I got a lot of my music was from Mark. Actually, yeah. he would, he showed me Jason Isbell, yeah. um, cover well, me up was I one mean, of his favorite songs. I mean, I introduced you guys to steel Panther. Steel so Panther was a big part. Oh, <laughs> I couldn't tell if okay. Mark liked or didn't like steel Panther. Though. I think he was a closet steel Panther. Fan. I think he liked to hate on it, but he, I yeah. think deep down he enjoyed it. Um, yeah. but yeah, that Those rule, everyone got song. one veto or two vetoes. Yes. Per song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. I'm pretty sure yeah. Mark vetoed the Steel Panther a couple of times. <laughs> um, but yeah, he, he like taking back Sunday. We, we just, we really Lucky bonded good. over some. Uh, yeah. As, some... as a matter of, matter of fact, Eric, I, I think you, you might have taken the, the legendary uh, picture. I think that was you who took that picture of Mark <laughs> yeah. with the hobo motif. Yeah, when y'all uh, when y'all brought that up on screen, I actually like forgot that I took the photo and then, yeah. then it brought me back to that exact moment. Um, yeah, because it was raining and right. I, I couldn't stop laughing while I was taking the photo. <laughs> so I had to like adjust my camera settings to get a faster shutter speed so that my jitteriness of me laughing didn't mess <laughs> up the photo because I couldn't believe what he was wearing. Because that's so Mark. That's a Florida boy right there. Florida boys will not wear jackets. They don't want, like. I know. It's just not. It's just and the how thing it is. is, he used to complain about being so cold. And I'm like, dude, why don't you wear like gloves or a coat or something? And he he always wear just like a like a surfer hoodie, you know. <laughs> For that freeze. one specifically, I'm pretty sure he bought a hot chocolate just to warm up his hands and not. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty sure he was just. I think he, you're right. He was just you're struggling right. through the cold. But that's, that's, he was a Florida yeah. boy, man. He, he oh, loved yeah. Florida. And in those, those trips to Mobile were so much fun at the Senior Bowl. Mobile chop suey, of course. Oh, know. my gosh. I and wish I had this. that photo. I, I was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mobile chop suey. Mark always had colorful words for that. Yeah, yeah. He, he's great. So, so here, here's the funny thing. My wife Ashley uh, and, and Mark, they, 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 they bonded too, and they, they both love drive by truckers. And for the longest time, I didn't appreciate the, the musical whatsoever. And I think between it was like stereo between Ashley and Mark, always playing drive by truckers, that kind of like grew on me, right? And so I just like dove headfirst into that, and and you know, um, started liking. Drive by Trekkers, and uh, they're not my favorite band. But the funny thing is, is when when Mark, because we we had a rule, whoever drove to Mobile, that you got to play the music, and then the, the veto thing would be in effect. But um, yeah, that was kind of the deal. So Mark's like, I want to start off, and he starts putting on Drive by Trekkers just to get in there under my skin. You and remember that, what song, right? There's Zip always City? one specific song, like one specific song he always played was Bulldozers, Bulldozers yes. and Dirt. And I hated exactly. that song when I first yeah. heard it, but by the end of those trips, I ended up loving it. <laughs> right, and, and so and yeah, he started playing that, and I said, "Oh, can you put on Zip City?" You know, and he's like, "How do you know that?" Excuse you know? me. Like, <laughs> yeah, and I and I said, "Oh, or maybe like maybe marry me." You know, I mean, there's there's a you know some of those songs that I would rip, rip off the top of my head, and um, he's like, "You like drive by truckers?" You know, I said, "Yeah." yeah. Finally, you you wore me down. <laughs> so um, yeah, great Eric, times was, on those trips. It was, and and uh, you know, it was cool too to to see Mark. Is obviously, you know, I'm I'm 49. How old are you, Eric? I mean, gosh, time. Flies. I'm 29. 29. I'm 29. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I mean, there's a 20 year age difference, right? So it's like, you know, uh, and, and Mark, you know, he would always try to be in the same age as me. I'm like, no, you know, you're a year older. It's like, don't don't put me in that category. Because because this whole year, Mark was like, well, you're 50. I'm like, no, I'm 49. You're 50. I'm I'm 49. But. Um, it was great to see the advice that, that he gave to kind of help mentor you and Andrew, those those uh, those meals and conversations we had at Hooters, you know, and oh, yeah. Saucy Q's barbecue. The good eats, times. Yeah. Beers, <laughs> eats, yeah. Great times. I, th I think we were buying you guys beers be well before you were able to. I want to say I had a beer at some point before I was I think, legal, I and I'm pretty so. sure Mark may have got it for me. But I, I think so, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Good times. Yeah. Well, Eric, listen, we, we really appreciate you coming on, man. Thank you so much for sharing that those times with us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you again for having me on. And, and my thoughts go out to his family, um, friends, all of his loved ones. I know from both Andrew and I just really appreciated the time we got to spend with him. And um, I, I'm thinking about him all the time now. So not that I wasn't before, but now I'm definitely yeah. thinking about him more. So thank you guys again for having me on. Absolutely. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. Thank you. 
you know, Trevor, I don't know if this would be a good time for me to to kind of tell the the Chuck Berry story. I I I, okay, I still think it's too early. Okay. I still think like we have a couple more guests. The whole point of the Chuck Berry story is you have to tell it at the end. That's the whole point of the Chuck okay. Berry story. I feel like okay. you can't I feel like we gotta we gotta get a couple more guests in here. We okay. gotta get it closer to the end of the show. We got we still gotta put it off a little bit. Okay. It'll be worth it'll be worth it. Trust me. It'll be that'll okay. be the right time. All right. Um we got Zach Shapiro, former a longtime Peter Report intern for us. Um uh, again, somebody else that Mark helped mentor. Real quick, Matt, any anything as we're 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 going down memory lane here. Any any uh, yeah, I mean, things I have... that you remember from Mark? I have so many things that go through my head when I think about Mark. I mean, the main two is just is just like how funny he was, all the jokes, the pranks, and and how much he cared for everyone too, and cared for like every single person that he essentially took under his wing, including myself. I mean, I've said before that I wouldn't have been at Pewter Report if it if it wasn't for Mark. And um I'll tell more about that later, but there's one thing that really popped in my head, and I know we're having Grizz on in a little bit. I don't know if he'll specifically remember this, but, you know, Mark would always be cracking jokes and telling stories at literally any moment, including in the middle of a game on Sunday in the press box. And I just remember specifically in 2019, maybe it was 2019, uh, I think it was. (laughs) And something just, I think, you know, the Bucks probably threw a pick or something like that. Or maybe the Bucks got a pick and it got overturned. And Mark just turns to Grizz and he's like, this is so dumb, but it's like so funny. It's so Mark. It's like, Grizz, I'm going to need you to look up every single interception the Bucks have had since 1990 that they <laughs> overturned because of a penalty. <laughs> And Grizz is like, uh, like you know, it was just some ridiculous stat that would be so difficult to find at like Impossible. you know the drop of a hat. <laughs> and the problem is, you and you and Taylor, you would think such, he's serious. So Grizz is like, uh, you, and, you, and, like, you and Taylor were such good interns. Taylor's probably like, <laughs> okay, yes, sir, yes. And then like turns on the computer, probably starts typing into Google every interception the Tampa Bay Buccaneers thrown since 1990. Pro Football Reference enter, <laughs> and then got over. <laughs> And then got overturned because of penalty or something like that. It was just such a like we're in the middle of like, oh, hey, if there's an injury. We got to get that up on the website or whatever. But I need you to look up this stat. Like we're going to yeah. need it for most impressive after the game or something like that. It was just those oh, little moments gosh. that I'll remember so much. Exactly. Well, right, hey, Scott, yeah, hold on. Yeah, hold yeah. on. You know what? You know, I just wanted to tell this because this is a little thing that popped in my head and I don't want to forget it. You remember when he would remember when he would sing his own lyrics to House of the Rising Sun before we do the podcast? Yes. Where he would just like change all the lyrics to just like yes. Dirk Cutter and John Gruden and Bruce oh, Arians and, and everything. Devil, and devil then, went down to Georgia. Yes, the devil went down yes, to Georgia. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. And then he just like he gets to the part we'd let him go the whole way, and then he'd just yes. be like and you and I would just we lose it for the next 10 minutes. We couldn't start the podcast. Oh, oh, I God. just remembered that. Yeah, the devil went down to Georgia. He just did that so yes. many times. I will remember <laughs> that forever. And the thing is, Trevor, he would do that like literally like 30 seconds before we were getting ready to record yes. the post game <laughs> podcast. And then we'd have to like take five minutes to like get our composure, you know. And he would like riff that like off the top of his head, you know. Because more Mark, Mark did not put any thought into the podcast whatsoever. No. Do <laughs> <No, laughs> no. we show up? No. Like after practice or the game. And, and you would say, so what are we talking about? He's like, I don't know. I'm just going to wing it. <laughs> and we did. And we, we did, did. Every time. You would You would normally have a notepad of probably like three to five things that you wanted yeah. to touch on. And Mark would be like, eh, if we get to it, we get to it. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I almost cracked up five minutes into the show because I was looking at the comments and someone had wrote about it. And I forgot about this. Someone had mentioned how Mark would call you, Trevor, would be like, Trevor Sikahema, or like yeah. whatever, yeah. something like that. Every, just, every episode, it was something like, totally that's all, different. Of man. all the things that I remembered, there's still so many things where someone brings that up, and I'm like, oh, yeah, like, you know, there's this and that. He used to call me underscore because he hated that I had underscore yes. in my, oh, in my yes, Twitter name. Did. And fans would come up yes. and be like, what up, underscore? So yeah. <laughs> it's just oh so gosh. crazy what sticks and what doesn't. That's awesome. I probably just reopened it there, but whatever. Yeah. Wait, listen, man, you have the distinction of being our only University of Tampa guy on staff right now. But That's before right. you, you had, a, you had a predecessor, another University of Tampa guy to Spartan, Zach Shapiro. How you doing, Zach? Good, Scott. How are you? 
doing really well, good under the circumstances. Yeah. yeah. No, it, 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 we're having a good time today. We're 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 crying. We're laughing. You know, it just yeah. like like I mean, Mark Mark made us laugh so much we would cry. So yeah. it's only appropriate tonight that we do both. Absolutely. Yeah, but, I'm enjoying uh, this this walk back toward uh, Mobile and and hearing what Jenna had to say. I completely agree about him seeing that outpouring of support was is really great. Um, and yeah, I've just been enjoying this like, celebration of of Mark. You know, you you sent me a fantastic email. You know, uh, the other day, um, I really appreciate you reaching out. I, I've gotten so many texts and emails. And I apologize if I've not gotten back to everybody. It has literally been an outpouring of support. Um, but uh, what are what are some of the things that stood out to you about Mark? Um, you know, you you went with you interned with us. What well, what was your your range um, in terms uh, four, of the years? Fourteen to seventeen. So. So you yeah, saw a lot of really, bad. really bad football, then, Zach. Yeah, <laughs> very bad football. Especially 2-14 and 14 in, in 2014. Yep. And in fact, the one time uh, Mark actually introduced me to Warren Sapp, which I know is kind of <laughs> – can be a risky move at, at, some time, at some point. So it just shows that relationship that he builds with every yeah. player to have that. And uh, the, he, said, he said, Warren, this is Zach. He interns with us, and he grew up in the 2000s, big Bucks fan. And Warren just looks at me and goes, and you grew up watching good football. And that was <laughs> that uh, conversation. So yeah, my time there, I, I saw the two and fourteen year and Jameis's rookie season, and yeah, not seven years. But uh, I, I just remember coming in um, as you know, sort of a, a, a shy and, and more reserved person, and covering the Bucks. I mean, it was overwhelming, and, and seeing all these great reporters that I followed my whole life, and I just was grateful to be able to cling to Mark Cook's reputation, you know, cause I could tell from the start that he was the guy that everyone around that facility, you know, from writers to players to, to whoever it was, you know, gravitated to and just yeah. everyone knew and loved. So, I mean, he was the re people would come in there and, and seek him out to tell him about their son's football game or even like a personal tragedy or something. And 20 minutes later, he'd be in the locker room, you know, talking one-on-one -on -one to a player that, he'd gotten to know um, and, and parlay that into like a, an exclusive interview. So he was always, you know, such a, a presence around one buck. And that was just cool for me to be able to just kind of co-opt his, his reputation. And, um, and I mean, he was just a, a great mentor throughout my three years there. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing that really stood out to me about Mark is, you know, um, you know, we can have like a like a chain of command, and you know, I got to run the company, and I've got to deal with you know all the financial stuff, the advertising, the editorial, you know, all of that. When it came to editorial, um, and and our, our interns or other writers, whoever it was, that was really Mark's domain. And I'd say that I would start off by saying, okay, well, we got a new, we got a new hire, we were, we, we got a new intern, you know, we we had this you know Zach, um, you know here, so make sure you. And as, as soon as I would say that, yeah, yeah, I, I got it. I got it, Scott. I got it. I got it. And you know what? He did. Yeah. He did get it. Because, Absolutely. Because he, uh, everybody that's been on tonight has really been touched by Mark in terms of um, trained, um, mentored. Um, you know, he's he just played a, a big role in, in everybody that's come up. Uh, I'm going to forget some names, but, you know, uh, Wolf Hurd, Eric Horchy, Victoria Horchak. Um, you know, uh, Andrew Scavelli, Eric Delarada, uh, yourself, Grizz, who's who's on deck, uh, Matt Matera, you know, Trevor, John. I mean, uh, everybody uh, has 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 been, you know, touched not inappropriately, but touched by Mark. You know, I mean, that's one thing he'd always say too. Is yeah, I, I, I'll tell you the the, 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 the the group text that we had. Um, was the funniest part about that. Like it's in so many ways, he was like Mark, um, like, like M Michael Scott from the office, you know, not, oh, not, yeah. not sexist or racist, but just there's so much dark, twisted humor, um, in the inappropriateness. It just was, was a scream to be around him because of a sense of humor. Yeah. No, I mean, he'd leave, leave us crying. I remember some of the stories in mobile and, and listen in those car rides up. I was fortunate to be a part of a few, um, and you know, not obviously we can't. Some of the humor is dark and and edgy, but always in good taste. Yeah, you you, you were sharing with me in your email, uh, sitting in in a restaurant in Mobile, 
And uh, what did you say about the the rock band Rush? Yeah, we were deciding whether to play, what to play on that jukebox, and he That's said right, he yeah. was just scrolling through, and he just crossed out Rush. And I said they have a few good songs, and just without missing a beat, he just said you're fired. Walk back to Tampa. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Uh, that's yeah, very that's classic mark yeah passionate about just as passionate about music as he was and in, in fishing as as florida state football or, or covering the bucks yeah no doubt about it. zach shapiro thank you so much for for coming on for being a big part of of you know mark's life um you know thought he thought the world of you and uh really enjoyed working with you as i did and um you know uh just really appreciate your kind words the other day and also today on the show yeah, thanks so much, Scott. And again, that was a beautiful tribute. And just this, you know, last few days has been really nice to see this Alpharm support. Appreciate it. Thank hey, you so hey, much. Thanks, Zach. Hey, Trevor. Thanks, thanks, man. Trevor, um, you know, you're. There were times on the podcast where I, I literally just would would get out of the way because it'd be you on one side, the young whippersnapper, like them Florida Gators, you know, and then Mark Cook, the old curmudgeon. You know, that Florida State Seminole guy and the other, you guys butted heads so many times. Unscripted. That was the beauty. Truly, yeah. You know. But – um, No, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, are, there, are there any exchanges that you remember, you know? I'm, tr I, I'm trying to think of exact exchanges. It was just – it was always so funny because going into podcasts and, and, and you remember this too, Scott, when there are times when we would walk into the room to do a podcast, Mark would be like, I don't want to do this today. It'd, it'd be like, it'd be like, it'd be like the fifth podcast of the week. Yeah. And you'd just be like, I don't want to do this today. Yeah. But then you just, you knew that he was the best part of the podcast. And like when it came time for him to do the intro and he came alive, like the podcast came alive. Yeah. And even though it might be interruptions. Yeah. The interruptions. Yep. The right. And, and an interruption. They, they would. Annie. Right. Ann or Annie? That's Ann true. Or Annie. It uh no, he's it's they're just whether it was how he would pronounce things, and I'll tell you too, some people in the comments were saying this, and I agree hundred percent. He's the king of ads. He's the king yes. of ad reads. Like when it came to the flare guns or like where to get your bait, or like yeah. li like literally anything. I I have done so many podcasts since being on the peter nation podcast and right. like every time i have to go read an ad there are so many times when i try to put my creative flair on it and i do that because of mark i do that because you think about mark. the flare gun yeah creative I flair i think yeah full pun intended i think how's, I how's think that for a segue everything about that and it's just one of the many many things that he taught us and scott you know over the last week or so so many people have reached out i've seen have reached out to peter report to you guys and some people have reached out to me as well which i've really appreciated and they all say the same thing like we love the podcast like like we felt like we were family in the podcast and the podcast was something that everybody loved and scott if you remember we had to like scratch and claw to get you guys you old heads to even start the podcast yes you guys didn't even you guys didn't even what you were like nah podcasting eh? like we're we're the journalists we do the yeah. writing things and i was like no, no 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 our personalities our conversations are great it should be in podcast form and i i still remember going to the school for the very very first podcast episode and that's something that uh you know i'll remember that drive i'll remember where i parked i'll remember right where we were sitting and, and all of that, like I'll remember that forever because it was the start of truly something right. special, not, be, not just between us, but that everybody got to be a part of. And, yeah. and it, it's part of Mark's legacy that everybody loved. Trevor, this, this might be an appropriate time for me to tell the Chuck Berry story. It's yeah. not, it's not, it's not. It's I not. should wait a little bit then. We still have guests. Okay. It's not, it's not time. Okay. All right. But uh, we'll, we'll get to that. Uh, yep. Later yep. In the yep. Yep. Okay. okay. Well, speaking of guests, this guy right here needs no introduction. But I'm Chris. Guys, Chris. guys, great right. to see you. Um, I appreciate hey. Scott you reaching out and having me on tonight. Absolutely. So, so Grizz, uh, um, I'm going to try and keep it together. You guys have done such a great job throughout the show, um, and it's already gotten me a little worked up, you know, at times. But I think this is a fun time um, to talk about Mark and celebrate the great times that we had with him. Um, it's just. I look back and me and Trevor talked not too long ago about 
there were so many times when it was the five of us um, sitting in that interview room yeah. at One Buck Place. And I like to think that this is just one more time when the five of us can kind of get back together just like that and have a good time. But Trevor made a good point. Um, when I was sitting at my desk at work Friday and Matt kind of gave me that call and let me know that Mark had passed, it was such a weird moment for me. I've been blessed to not really have many experiences in my life where I've lost someone close to me. And when he gave me that call, it got me thinking about a lot of different things. Um, a lot of the good times, so many funny moments. I mean, Mark can make you laugh like no one could. You guys have told so many great stories. Um, but I think back, like Trevor mentioned, about my first time meeting Mark. And I overdressed. I wore dress pants and dress shoes and a long sleeve button down to Panera Bread. And he was sitting there wearing shorts and pants and, and, yeah. and a baseball cap and maybe a, a pewter report polo. So that meant he was dressed up for the day. Um, right. <laughs> and I was just an intern, you know, trying to be an intern. I was a senior at USF at the time. Um, and he said, after we talked a little bit, I'd sent him some writing samples. And he said, would you mind coming over and helping now? Did you bring your stuff? And I said, yeah. So I was, I mean, it was like a dream come true day one. And I walked into One Buck Place the first time that day and met um, every, all of you but Matt. Um, and that was the beginning of five years that we all kind of worked together at Pewterport. And I, um, in that time, I got so close to all of you and Mark. And we had so many good times and he was, he was gruff and he was a curmudgeon, but in the best possible way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't the Grizz until you met Mark, you know? Yeah. He gave you your nickname. Yeah. He was a procurer of nicknames <laughs> from underscore to man bun to some things that we'll probably not mention tonight that Trevor ultimately said that's got to be downgraded to Grizz which stuck. Like Matt said, I still have people who listen who listen to the Peter Nation podcast, now the Peter Report podcast, that call yeah. me Grizz. But as gruff as he was on that exterior, he cared and he loved. And he loved so many things, um, none more than his family. Um, he loved Daisy and he loved his brother and he loved his dad and he loved the Bucks and he loved Douglas. He was so proud of Douglas. Um, but he loved us. And as gruff as he was on that exterior, he um he would be blunt and he would criticize you even when you didn't want it, but he would lift you up even when you didn't need it or you didn't know you needed it. Um, and I always, I when when Matt told me that, um, I texted or Trevor texted me shortly after, and I sent him a text that really stuck out to me. Um, Scott, you mentioned, uh, Louis Grizzard, one of his favorite writers. And when we talk about all the things that Mark love and Daisy and Douglas and the Bucks and Plant City and fishing, I watched Mark Cook throw a line in. He never missed throw a line in at a retention pond across the street from your house before That's we true. filmed the Pewter Report podcast. And I've watched him. I will never forget when Matt and I played in that Mike Evans charity golf tournament and yeah. you had people on every hole and Mark is riding around in a golf cart with a fishing pole, fishing <laughs> yeah. in water hazards on this. He went nice there for golf the golf. Course. But he, one tweet from, was a quote from Louis Grizzard. Um, I think he had pinned for a long time that said, can you say that again, Grizz? Call your mama. Yeah. Say that again. You yeah, just broke um, up a little bit. Uh, sorry, uh, he had a, a pin tweet for a long time that said, "Call your mama." I wish I could call mine. Yeah, and, um, and I think that I think that's the best thing about this is, in, in you know, like I I lost my mom last October, and she's in a better place, and um, you know, I know Mark is reunited with his mother Emma, you know, and he's in a better place right now, you know, and that's one thing Jason Light. Jason texted yeah, me and, um, Friday morning at 7 a.m. And, and um, you know, he says, yeah, I know you're hurting. Just want to check on you and just know that uh, the Mark's in a better place. You know, he's with your mom and 
my dad, and he's going to have the best seat in the house for Bucks football this year, you know. And, um, you know, he's he's and in a better place. I think Trevor said it best where, you know, he loved the Bucks so much. He loved to talk about that 79 team that was 10 points from a Super Bowl and those yeah. footy pajamas from a Sears catalog that he wore. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so, some and of my favorites. They'll always Sorry, be champions Chris. in his world. No, you're fine. Um, but I look back on that quote, call your mama, because I wish I could call yeah. mine. And I know we all wish we could. Wish we can call him right now. Yeah. Wish we could he, he could be up. Yes. Yeah, Scott, I mean, you go back to uh, talking about how you spoke to Jason. And um, I think you mentioned this in the Fab Five, but I was actually, I was, Mark and I were at the parade uh when the bucks won the super bowl and so you wrote about it, but i i saw it when uh you know mark and jason they just had the biggest bear hug you know yeah. after the event and everything and you know seeing that you just you just knew it was two guys that had both been through a lot with with these bucks teams on you know in one sense on opposite ends of the spectrum but at the same time they they both went through it together and um, you know that that was um, that was just a great thing to see. You know, if 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 that's one of the last things that Mark got to experience covering the Bucks, watching the Bucks is you know he got to celebrate it with the players themselves, the the front office, and and um, just just seeing the you know the the highest of the highs for yeah, for yeah. this team that he loves so much. Mark, yeah. sorry, Mark, I tried, I tried to hold it together. No, um, no, you're good, man. but it's like I said, he just, he loved so much. Um, and luckily I, when I moved on from Peter report, I got an opportunity to write for the plant city observer, um, his hometown. He loved to talk about that pine crest uniform that he used to throw on. And he'd always threaten when he got fired up to throw on that old plant city Raiders Jersey and, and run Oklahoma drills again in the parking lot, which I know his body wouldn't hold up, but he would do it in a heartbeat if he could. And um, and it was just, he knew because the plant city observer also published, which is an agriculture magazine called in the field magazine, where he wrote in his days prior to joining yeah. Buccaneer magazine. Yeah. So right. my He's publisher right and my field. editor, That's right. yeah. yeah. So my publisher and my editor, um, both knew him. Um, and so when I first got offered the job at the plant city observer, I called him. And I asked him about my publisher, Karen, Karen, and my editor, Sarah, and asked him what he thought. And he told me only good things. And it wasn't until I joined Pewter, or, uh, the Plant City Observer that they told me, you know, that through nothing out of his own goodwill, he called up the Plant City Observer and called Karen and called Sarah and spoke so highly of me for no reason other than because that's just the kind of person he was. He just was. Yeah. He cared. Yeah. He 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 loved to embrace that gruff, that tough, that ginger badass exterior. Mm -hmm. But but make no mistake, he cared about the people that were around yeah. him, and he cared about. I mean, he was so good with kids. When we had those bowling, the Pewter Report bowling league, yeah. when we had events, he was so good with kids, and he was so good with fans. And it's no surprise to see the outpouring of love we saw it when he left pewter report and we saw it after he passed that it people who didn't know him who only could hear him on the podcast and, and read his writing he just people drew to him like a flame and it's so easy to see why he was so good with people yeah. and he just cared yeah there he is right there putting logan in the chokehold yeah my son <laughs> So yeah, there's Caden and Jillian and Ellie and Logan at a, a Bucks training camp, and you know Mark would come up and you know give everybody hugs and choke Logan. So. Mark had an unbelievable way of breaking down barriers, and I, I, you know, when Matt says that Mark and Jason just saw each other after the Super Bowl and just gave each other a big bear hug, I mean, that's a that's a journalist and a general manager of an NFL team, you know? Yeah. And, and like when we saw, when, when we saw uh, the picture earlier, that was a, a journalist and who was joking around and messing around with the appearance of an NFL head coach. And, and he was loving it in Bruce Arians when he was wearing the hat and the glasses and everything. And, and whether it was 
an NFL front office person or a player or someone who is brand new to media. I, I can't tell you how many stories I've heard over the last week about people who were, you know, these fringe kind of like fan part-time media members or whatever say like Mark was the first one who ever said hello to me or, or, or showed me around or showed me or like made me feel accepted in the media workroom at one buck place. Mark had an unbelievable attitude and, and just something about him when it came to breaking down barriers. How <laughs> I look at that picture. He, I'm sorry, Trevor. I don't mean to interrupt. No, 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 you're fine. Picture. He, he, he just, he was able to just see people for people, whether you were the starting quarterback or or a third stringer or in the front office or a media member or literally just any other Bucks fan, he was able to meet you exactly where you were, look you eye to the eye, and and just connect with you. He was just that's that it's 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 one of the many many things that I will be able to take away from my time being so close to him and being a friend and being able to call him a brother was just that ability to just see any human being. Yeah. Just that for just as a human being, a fellow human being. We, we had lunch with, with, with Rondé Barber several years ago and uh, Rondé texted me um, late on, on uh, Thursday night and uh, you know, and passed along his condolences and um and said, you know, we're going we're to remember Mark on the broadcast. And, um, you know, and I, I was, was watching the game at home this week. And, uh, you know, in the, in the second half, I think it was around the fourth quarter when Rondé came on. He and Chris Meyer said some awfully nice things about Mark. And I, I just lost it on the couch. He just lost it, you know. He was really beloved by so many people. Um, and you mentioned that, that, that tough exterior grizz. We got the Cliff Welch on deck, our longtime photographer saving the best guest for last um you know um mark was tough on the outside a lot of people don't know this but you know mark mark was a, a diabetic and he had some some foot problems um you know because of, of his diabetes and that's something that he and, and cliff have in common and um and also too mark <clears throat> mark um, was having some some vision problems with his with his eye <clears throat> and um you know we always had this dark twisted sense of humor he and i shared and you know he would he, he would uh, give us as much as he got you know which was great we had some great back and forths you know and i just said mark you know if you, if you have to cut your foot off i mean you you have to get a peg leg i think i probably said that in front of you guys too you know and i said you lose the eye damn it man just get a, a patch it'll get you a pair for your shoulder you'll be a, you'll be a damn buccaneer you know you'll come full circle you cover the bucks and you'll be a buccaneer you know and of course he laughed at that and and, um, you know, but, you know, he, he did have some, some health issues. Um, and one of those health issues, guys, we saw firsthand, um, at my house. Oh my god! That's gosh. right. I wow. forgot, I forgot when about he that. did that. Yeah. Okay. So what you're looking at, and I don't mean to gross anybody out, but uh, that's Mark's hand sliced open minutes before taping the Peter Report Truly, podcast at yes. my house. Yes. Still have the blood stains on my carpet. <laughs> that have not come out and and so the the funny thing is is um you know i, I uh, we were getting like new cables i think for the microphones and they were all bundled up and and he said do you have a knife reynolds i said yeah and i got this spider coat knife it's like a like a hunting knife that i would use you know and i i probably even said something to smart ass like you know like don't cut yourself you know and he's like do you know what Dear, I feel trust before. I feel dressed here all the time. I don't use a knife. So he sits there and he's like doing this and slices his hand right open. I mean, he is bleeding to beat the band. I mean, just like it's a waterfall of blood coming out, you know. And it's like, Mark, we need, we need to take you to the hospital. He's like, I just need some bandages. I'm good to go. Like he's sitting He's like doing this, holding his hand and blood everywhere. And uh, I'm like, we don't have to do the podcast now. If you want to like go to the hospital or like, you know, like an urgent care or something and get that stitched up. He's like, I'm fine. We'll do the podcast. <laughs> so we're all sitting there doing the podcast as Mark is bleeding to death. <laughs> Just, <laughs> it was the funniest thing. I mean. It was that's the most cl it's just classic Mark. Yeah, just classic. Cla Mark, just yeah. classic. Yeah, hand me a knife. I've been around knives my whole life. Nothing I feel gonna happen. Dear, yeah. give me the damn Slice knife. Slice Taylor, do, I, 
Taylor, I don't know if you'll remember this. Uh, Trevor, you might have been there too, but there there was one time we were in the the media room. We were either waiting to speak to someone else or maybe waiting to go into to open locker room. Doesn't really matter. But we were just waiting, trying to kill time. And Mark like whips out his phone, opens up his desk, and he like pulls out some like bubble gum and he's like, All right, we're gonna have a contest. Bubble blowing like, contest. Yeah. All right, we're gonna have that first grizz, like first one to blow. <laughs> First one to blow a bubble wins or whatever. And you and I were like, all right, like let's do it. And we're like going so hard. And both of us are like struggling terrible as terribly as Mark's just laughing at us the whole time. I wasn't sure if you remember that because I know Mark took video of it, but yeah, I don't I think, think it ever the made the rounds the on social media. I think he put it in the group chat not too long ago. That was just one okay, of the many well, things. I remember yeah. remember when he put when he took the bag of bit of honey and he put it up on the podium for when Dirk was coming up. And then he tossed, <laughs> and then he tossed yeah. it into the crowd. For, for yeah. like, I don't even remember if there was a reason for it. He just like had it or was, brought it was, a it bag was, of bit was, of honey. It was Dirk's was favorite birthday? candy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Dirk's favorite, favorite, candy. favorite candy. And so he <laughs> comes with a bag of bit of honey equipped, ready to go, and he and he takes it up and he sets it up on the podium and Dirk comes out and Dirk is just visibly shaken. Just so confused <laughs> at why someone would bring bit of honey and put it up there. How they knew that. And he starts launching it at, at media members. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, and I mean, so I think funny. I think Jenna brought him cupcakes once and luckily he didn't throw cupcakes to the That's media right, members. Yeah. But that was just one of the absolutely hysterical things he did. I was going back and listening to some of our old Pewter Nation podcasts um, the other night and just how hard we laughed. Yeah. Just, I mean, before the podcast, not even. To I was going to say, mm-hmm. yeah, the, 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 I think that's probably the most disappointing thing for the but fans we, we, out like there. Like you guys said, we laughed yeah, so was, hard. Was the podcast before started. the podcast was actually the best version. <laughs> <laughs> the most inappropriate at times, but also the best. So. Grizz, listen, Absolutely. we appreciate having you on so much. Thank you for, for you know, for for being an awesome Peter reporter. Like just like Trevor, you guys are always your your Peter report alums. Jenna too. I mean, you know, you're you're part of the Peter report family once and, and forever. So, absolutely, Thanks you so guys have done a great again. job so far in these stories. I appreciate you guys having me on and just giving me a chance for the five of us to get back and cut it up one more time. I appreciate that. Absolutely, love you, Thanks, bud. Grizz. Grizz, love you, Grizz. Love you Take care. So many think that that uh, that I've been around Peter Report for for twenty uh, twenty six years now. Um, the Buccaneers, Jason Light and Brian Ford, gave me that. There it is, right there. Wrong. There it is. The Peter Report twenty jersey. That was six years ago. I got that from the, the Buccaneers, which was really cool. Um, but there's a guy that actually uh, has been with Peter Report longer than me. Uh, you know, you probably haven't seen him or heard him. We haven't had him on the podcast till now. That's going to change. We'll have him on the podcast in the future. It's this guy right here, Cliff Welch. And uh, when I got my 20, he was getting his 30. That's right. He shot uh, photos for Buccaneer Magazine before wow. I even started working there. So uh, that was several years ago. I can't. I don't even know how long Cliff's – he's probably forgotten. Cliff's got a, a bad memory. He's older than I am. But, cool. um, but uh, if, if that was my 20 – I mean, Cliff's probably done this for uh, probably 10 years longer than myself. So I'm going to bring in right now the Shutterbug, Cliff Welch, our, our photography. The, hey, here's Cliff. the great thing. Uh, How are you doing? Every, everybody has seen our, our fantastic photos from you, and now they get to meet the, the guy behind the scenes. And the thing is, Cliff, is, is you've known Mark just as long as I have. Um, uh, he started coming around the Buccaneers in 1994 as an intern for – WFNS Sports Radio 910 Plant City back in the day. And that's really when you were shooting for the Buccaneers too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I remember. I'm trying to think. Was there a time where he was with us and he left and then he came back, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, he, we worked on game day for a long time by Buccaneer Magazine. And then we hired him full time about 10 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I, but, I, but he's he's always been a presence, just usually on game days. But then it's been full time, you know, for, see, for the last some decade. Reason, was there some type of relationship where maybe Jeff stood back and you were more like over the uh, Buccaneer magazine, and yeah, and uh, Mark kind of had the same role as he has now, where he was the editor. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my memories, but at the same time, like you said, I'm getting old. I'm a little, getting 
people. I forget where I park, but I can tell you about the 70 <laughs> years like it was yesterday. Yeah. So, that was always the one thing I always talked and give you an idea. Here was one of my first Buccaneer photos I ever shot. That gives you an idea. Wow. Dickinson, who still walks the sidelines at the Buccaneer games, checking the players, make sure the uniforms are right. Oh, Colonel Dickinson, that's right. Yeah, the first quarterback of the Bucks. So at of them. 13 years old, I was shooting over the wall. And, um, you know, I was uh, 1979. I got lucky, walked to the bathroom at the beginning of the NFC Championship game, found a sideline pass on the floor, picked it up, tied it to my belt, I'm 15 years old, and I roll right out onto the field and watch the game from the field. I, <laughs> oh, my God. That's that, fantastic. The, I don't get the stands anymore. It's much better on the field. Yeah. Well, you've been on the field for well over 30 years now, shooting awesome picks for us. You know, you, you and Mark uh, talked a lot because he was kind of in charge of, of photos. And, uh, you know, what, what are some of the things that you remember about Mark? He, he, he was quite a character. Well, I, I when I first came on and started listening, y'all were talking about music. And if you want to, the God's honest truth, we talked more about music yeah. than anything we talked about. I right. mean, when uh, the Bucks played in Jacksonville like two years ago, um, I uh, I decided without I didn't tell him. And then all of a sudden, halfway through, I called him up and said, "I am going to the Leonard Skinner Hell House." Going to all the places in Jacksonville that had to do with Leonard Skinner. And I mean, he was wanting to play by play of everything I, everywhere I went. Who did I see? Did I see any relatives? Can I take a photo of where the the Hell House was? And they <laughs> they still in the ground because they're they're actually selling the property for a yeah. real a whole lot of money for where that Hell House originally was. And walked all the way out to the here, and it hasn't changed. And he was very interested in that. We um. Uh, I remember a story, um, you know, he was, uh, you probably brought it up earlier about, I'm trying to think, The Waltons? Is that the show he Oh, yeah, he, he loved The Waltons. No, John that, Boy Walton? Yeah. He knew, the, the, that. he knew the writer. For some way or another, he had a connection to the, uh, the main person who basically they based the show on, The Waltons. Yeah. So uh, I knew that he loved the show so much that I... Uh, wrote a letter, Richard Thomas. Richard Thomas was on Broadway. And I told Richard all about Mark, sent him some clips on Mark, and um, asked him would he sign a photo. And he did. He signed it to Mark with all this nice stuff on it, mentioned about the Buccaneers as well. Mm -hmm. And Mark was going to cry. It was just such a touching thing because you knew how much he, he, that meant to him. Yeah, and he loved he loved nostalgia. He loved the South. He was a Southern boy by the grace of God, as I said. I'm calm, you know. On my Facebook page and on my uh, on my Instagram account, I put uh, the Freebird because he loved Leonard yeah, Skinner. He did. And I put Freebird. I put the little thing about the Freebird so you could hear the music, and that's what I think of when I think of Mark. Now, I mean, he's a free bird. Yeah. Yeah. And and he 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 enjoyed life. And, you know, if we were talking Florida State, if we were talking about Douglas, we were talking about Daisy, we were talking whatever, he, he, he loved all of that. I mean, to see someone that could sit and fish, and I can't fish, I grew up on a lake, I cannot. <laughs> I could fish in a video game when the fish comes up on the video game every two minutes. Right. Uh, just all day and be happy, I would have walked off like 10 minutes into it. I couldn't do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, Cliff, you were there with us in London for the the one of the worst Buccaneer games of all time. <laughs> it's just an awful game. We <laughs> honestly, it was a fun trip. It was a it was a fun trip until kickoff. Yeah, uh, exactly. Actually, 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 kickoff was great. It was the first pass that was picked off by Jameis Winston. That that's when it went downhill. But it yeah. was a fun fun trip until then. Um, I mean, the level of excitement um, that that Mark had with us going to Abbey Road. Where, because he was a huge Beatles fan, I mean right. th that was phenomenal. And then you taking pictures of Mark and I walking across the crosswalk at Abbey Road, like doing the Beatles uh, thing. That was, well, I think, one of the highlights of his life. To be honest, 
Oh, I really think so too. He he really loved the Beatles. We I remember us talking about it before while we were on the plane together. We were talking about it. Make sure we got to do it the right way. I had to stand out in the middle of the road and make sure I didn't get hit by these double decker buses. Yes. And then I mean, they don't care in England. Don't fool you. Crosswalks mean take your chance, your life in your hands. <laughs> kind of how it was, and I'm sitting there just trying to dodge, get the photo. And I said, oh, I got to get your hands right. So, yeah, we got the photo. It worked out very well for it, for um, you guys. Um, it was, you know, that trip to London was memorable. We, as you well know, Scott, we walked around with our good friend Roger, who lives in London. Yeah, Roger McQueen. Yes, we walked around London. I, If you were asking me, I'd say at least eight hours. I mean, yeah. when I tell people, we walked from Parliament all the way to the – Tower Bridge, they're like, what? You walked yeah, that? We did. Yeah, we, we spent the entire day Saturday walking, yeah, probably around 10 miles. Uh, I'm sprinkling, too. Yeah, yeah, in the rain, in the London rain, you know. And, and of course, I think you took this picture of us, uh, Mark and I, at the Admiralty Pub, uh, having yep. some beers. So, some Fuller's London pride there. But, um, when I see that photo, <clears throat> when I see that photo, the thing um, like you, you guys were talking about the one thing I would say about Mark is um, um, he he was probably would give you a hundred and eighty percent turn from the moment when you're saying we're getting ready to go on, and you're like, uh, and then all of a sudden he goes, and he's like, boom, stuff. and and I photograph comedians, concert people, whatever, and comedians are normally known for being very, very quiet kind of even shy right and then all of a sudden they get on stage and they're so outgoing and everybody yeah. loves them. and and that's how i mark was a little bit more reserved than people actually realize right but then, he was an old curmudgeon at times i mean he was you know he he had his moments i mean yeah. it, <laughs> it, it, maybe his donut was bad that morning i don't know i mean he ate chicken nuggets i think more know what chicken nuggets can do to a human being after <laughs> 50 years, he probably right. ate them one, and he yeah. loved them. Um, you know, I can't tell you, uh, but he, uh, him and I had some of the fun, the most fun talking, like I said, we talked from Leonard Skinner to country music to the Beatles. I mean, I, I, I don't know that he ever went to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I hope he did. And if he hasn't, if he didn't go, I hope he's visiting it right now. Yeah. Uh, taking it all in. Because from this, he's got an awesome view of all of us, and he's rooting for all four of us, five of us, all of us. Yeah. He's rooting for us to keep up what we're doing, and and keeping Buccaneer Pride out there. And uh, you know that that was his love. He he loved yeah. the Buccaneers. Him and I both. We're both old guys, and yeah. I I loved the Bucks since, since day one, and I, and so did Mark. So, yeah. Cliff, thank you so much, Shutterbug, for coming on tonight. Sharing yes, your stories with Mark, you know, and we'll see you at a training camp for more of your amazing photos. You just get better with age, man. Yeah, exactly. Take care, Cliff. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Cliff. Thanks. I appreciate it. Oh, guys, <clears throat> a lot of love for Mark Cook. It's easy to see why because he had a lot of love to give, you know. Um, you know, he, he loved Pewter Report, and um, we loved – every minute of, of having him um, with us. And, um, you know, the, uh, the podcast is, is really, I'm so glad Trevor that, that you and him, cause I was, I was really the last one to kind of come around, but you guys really kind of spearheaded this uh, endeavor and it really gave people a chance to see the real Mark Cook. Yep. Because the behind the scenes Mark Cook was the real Mark Cook. And the, the behind the scenes real Mark Cook came through loud and clear on the podcast. His twisted dark sense of humor, um, his, you know, his uh, good natured ribbing, um, you know, all of that. Uh, his, his imagination, um, you know, it was, was just, it was awesome. It was awesome to be a part of. And I'm glad that we were able to transition from the audio audio version of the pewter nation podcast, the video version of the pewter report podcast. Mm -hmm. So people could, could really see, you know, the, 
the the character and the caricature <laughs> that that was Mark Cook because the guy was was uh, was visually funny too. You know, I, I remember I wrote about it in in my Fab Five um, tribute last Friday. You know, um, when when Mark was was heavier, you know, and and uh, he and I we both have kind of built similar. I'm a little taller, but you know, um, you know, we're, we're we we both have gone through kind of our skinnier phase, and we've you know, this this is Mark when I first met him. He's a heavier guy, um, but when he was was you know heavier like this, he looked like Chris Farley, you know, mm. and so he he would sit there and do the you know fat man and little co, you know, and just it would just he would just do that like. Just because, just because I, he wanted, he wanted to make you laugh. I mean, that's that's why I I push so hard to do the podcast is because yes. if if you guys had boring personalities, I wouldn't have pushed for it because it would have like because it would have stunk. But I, you know, I, I I I was working with you guys for a couple of months, and I'm like, this is gold. The three yeah. of us sitting at one buck place. I mean, this is what Buccaneers fans want. They want your great writing, but they want to know the person behind the writing too. And and you know, I'll, I'll kind of end it with this. And I was thinking about this when Jenna w was speaking and, and talking about Mark and how inviting he was and the presence that he was. And, and you know, when I really kind of sit back and think about it, Mark's seat at One Buck Place was in the middle. And, and Mark's, yeah. Mark's seat was really the only seat at One Buck Place that could connect with every other seat that was in the room whether it right. was the wdae guys next to him in the corner whether it was jenna or on the other side rick and greg and everyone over there and and uh, you know if he looks to his right then you have the whole pewter report team there and at the end you had fred and the joe bucks fan guys and like ever and everything mark could connect with everyone and it's so funny how things work out that I'm sure that seat assignment was just a random seat assignment. And yeah. now when you sit back and you think about it, how special that group of people was and how special Mark was in the middle, he was in the exact seat that he was destined to be in, in all of our lives. And I know he's still going to be in the middle of that room forever for everybody. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right. Well said, uh, Trevor, Matt, any, any final uh, words to, to share? Yeah, um, kind of what everyone was talking about. Just Mark wasn't afraid to talk to anyone, and the the relationships and the bonds that he built with everyone it was just uncanny. The way he could find anything in common with anyone. Um, yep. And I just appreciate seeing all the fans, their outpouring of love. It just shows the effect that Mark had on them, whether he spoke to them every single day or he met them one time. And, uh, you know, before I was talking about some of the funny moments and I'll try to make it not like a, a long thing, but just the amount that he cared too. like, I remember just asking him one time, he was like teaching a class that I was at and, you know, I just brought up to him, oh, by the way, like I do some writing at the time and I'm trying to muster up the courage just to be like, I would love to like shadow you one day or whatever. And before I even asked that, he was like, oh, like we'll have to have you out to training camp at one time. And and obviously that eventually snowballed into where I am now with Pewter Report. But just the fact that he, like, without even blinking, was like, yeah, like, let's help this kid out. Let's give him a chance. And yeah. the fact that he kept, you know, uh, you know, that and that steamrolled into, OK, like, like, let's bring you on as an intern. And even I'd only been there for like two practices and he's texting me being like, oh, hey, this is a cool picture that you're in. And the fact that he cared and and our, our relationship just just grew so much. And um no offense, guys, but he said I was his favorite pewter reporter. Because yeah, 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 yeah. To take shots at everyone, but he respected that I would take shots back at him. Yes, that's um, true. That's but true. I, like, I do remember he also said too. He was like, and this goes back to him caring of just, you know, he would. I remember there was like one article I was writing about Vita Vea, and I remember there was like a lot of things, and he like emailed me like, "This is what you did wrong here, here, and here," and he's like, "Make yeah. sure you get thick skin or whatever, you know, stuff yeah. like that." Oh yeah, and I was like, "Yeah, I will." But he then the next the day, now. And, but the, the next day he was like, "By the way, just so you know, we think you're doing a really great job here, or whatever." And that was just like the yeah. how he showed both sides of it. And um, another thing too, just to show how Mark cared is um, again when uh, when our relationship grew and stuff. Mark always found such it could be like the smallest little thing, but he would be so interested in all of these different intricacies. For example, 
Um, Mark hates. He he loves the the celebration of Gasparella, but Mark <laughs> yes. hates if you call it Gaspy. He That's hates right. if you call it Gaspy. <laughs> That's true. And That's I remember true. me and him would go back and forth sometimes. Not that I'm like, you know, I'm waving the flag for hey, like it's okay to call it Gaspy, but I'd be like, well, what's the difference between calling the Florida State Seminoles just saying go Noles? And he's like, well, actually, like you might have a point there, whatever. But that was yeah. just part of the the back and forth we'd have. And I remember too, you know, I, 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 my hometown. I come from this town. It's technically Massapequa Park, but I always say Massapequa. <laughs> and <laughs> Mark was just obsessed with the word Massapequa. Oh, like yeah. I don't know the the way the P pops in in Massapequa. Yeah. And I remember like we'd be talking and uh, we we're talking about like a fight or something, and he'd be like, "Oh, yeah. did you beat him up Massapequa style?" <laughs> and like yeah. he used to say it in such a a Mark way. And and I'll just well, I'll miss those things. I and, know. The conversations we'd have where I'd be like, hey, uh, there's a Leonard Skinner concert on right now. Like, you should check it out. And then another time he would just text me randomly out of the blue. Like, oh, hey, I don't know if you knew, but in 1973, uh, a hot dog at Shea Stadium where the Mets played cost 75 cents. <laughs> and like, it's so random, but it's, know. you know, it's just he and I used to thing that the, Mark was. Oh, yeah. He and I used to have the back and forth. So I was a big Kiss fan. Still am, you know. Um He's a Beatles fan, so we always used to go back and forth about the Beatles and Kiss being the better band and and all that. It was I just loved the the banter we had, the the text messages. Those were those were the times that I'm I'm gonna really miss. <sighs> yeah, it's uh, it's been a really too. really rough couple of days uh, for sure. And uh, one last Mark thing, this was. Um, after I found out that he passed away, Scott, you had told me the news. I was still in the trailer at, at the Buccaneers facility. I was getting ready to leave. And um, as I left, naturally, I blasted Leonard Skinner because I didn't think of, uh, you know, what better way to honor Mark after hearing that. Right. And um, I'm getting close to my apartment. And I turned down the street that, you know, I'm supposed to go town. And there's this giant truck like right in the middle of it's a side street, but he's right in the middle of the street like there's and it wasn't moving anytime soon. So I had to turn around, go down a different different street. And that street was blocked off from construction. And all I could help but think was it was two, two things with Mark. One, it was him messing with me one last time. <laughs> and two, Mark just wanted me to listen to the Skinner song That's for right. just a little bit more. Yeah. And I. I I, I do think that was Mark uh, yeah. sending something there. Two more things real quick. I, I know that, that, um, that I said that Mark only hated the Gators. That's not true. Mark hated the elevator at uh, one buck place too. He was deathly afraid yeah. of getting stuck in the elevator. <laughs> you, you know, you know what? I, I was thinking about this the other day. Mark was, claustrophobic more than any person that I've ever met in my entire life. Yes. It it took true. it took all of the willpower in him to even get into the elevator to make it to the press box every single Bucks game. And I don't think that people realize that. Yeah. And there was a moment where the first couple of times that I used the elevator with him, he told me he's like, hey, I don't really like love elevators. And he like kind of freaked out a little bit the, the first couple of times we were in the elevator. And like yeah. I didn't I didn't know if he was joking, but joking because, <laughs> because like he's a big prankster, right? You guys yeah. you and Mark used to mercilessly prank me my first year there. And so I wondered if it was on the pranks. And when I figured out it wasn't, I was like, Oh dang, okay. And we eventually got to the point where I would try to make sure that like, I'd be like, okay, like we'll ride in the elevator together. And right. there came a, there came like really like a point or an instance or two where he'd be in the elevator with me, but like he felt okay because like I was in there with right. him and that was a big moment for me. I was like, yeah, this dude really like, he trusts me. Like this oh, yeah. is, and it was just like, it was, it was another one of those things where it was like, this is the friendship we had. This is the connection yeah. that we had. He knew that like, if I was getting in the elevator, like it right. wasn't going to crash and fall. Like we were going to be okay. <laughs> like I was, you know, I wasn't just yeah. toying with or it. Or at least the know? Lord's going to take a Gator fan with me. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah, the score. yeah. One for one. So it, I, yeah, I, I remembered that yet the other day and it, it just made me smile thinking about how, yeah. uh, you know, we got to that point in our friendship and our relationship. And you it's know, just, I, uh, I'll say this too. I mean, Matt, you bring up a great point about Massapequa. He used to love Massapequa. You know, he used yeah. to love to say that, but, but that was not his favorite city. Believe it. You know what his favorite city was? Chicago. 
You know with, why? With Matt Nagy. <laughs> Matt Nagy. I think I'm going to listen to that podcast after this. Because that... Nagy. Was that the Chicago game when Mitch Trubisky like, lit up the, the box? <laughs> yeah. I don't know when it you was. Know, you, know we interviewed, you interviewed Matt, Matt Nagy after the Chicago game. Adam Kaplan. <laughs> I don't do it as well as Mark does. I'll admit, I, I don't do a lot of things as well. As there Mark. are times when we were gasping for air when he would yeah. bring that up. Oh yeah. my goodness, Trevor! What was your all-time favorite intro name Mark gave you? Do you remember? Well, the I mean, movie. I so I mean, like the man bun will always be very, very special to me because right. Mark called me that more than anyone else, and. And anytime a, a Bucks fan or a former Peter Report reader of mine or whoever it is references that hairstyle that I had, or that <laughs> nickname or whatever, I'm always going to think of Mark because yeah. it was just like Taylor said, he was relentless with the nicknames. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm very thankful that he was because it truly gave us an identity, right? I mean, when yeah. people talked about the podcast, they knew me as man, but this was like in an, a podcast alter ego that I got to have because right. of him, which is really cool. And of course the, you know, favorites were when, uh, when he would say, this is my boss, Trevor Sikama. And for some reason <laughs> I would be the boss for that episode of the podcast. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, cool. Great. This yeah. is the power. Um, the one last thing, Trevor, um, uh, we, 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 we pranked each other so much. Um, you thought you were being pranked one time when you actually weren't. Do you remember Which, that going going to McDill? Oh my lord in heaven! Yes. <laughs> okay. So, I we we did we we threw pranks on each other so much, and like I said, Scott and Mark pranked me so much in my yeah. first oh, year. Hold on, hold on one second. So so okay, this to put it in football terms, this is like when a quarterback is getting hit in sack so much they feel like like ghost pressure. They feel like yes. the phantom pressure. They throw the ball away when they actually had a clean pocket. That's they kind got, of that's what we did to Trevor. Mark and Scott got me so good so many times that I th they achieved their goal. I had fear <laughs> in the back of my head at all times, no matter what. And so there was an event at McDill Air Force Base, and I had never I'd never been to McDill before. Obviously, that's 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 uh, south yeah, in Tampa. It was, it was and, a former Bucks coach John Gruden was there working and, with the uh, with the right. troops. And John Gruden was doing an event there, and right. I got an email from Scott the night before. Saying, hey, Trevor, we're going to go do this. John Gruden's teaching these these kids some drills, whatever. We're going to go cover it. I'm like, oh, okay. So I go drive down. Like I said, like I've never been to McDill before. Yeah. So I check in. And it's this, like, to get on a McDill Air Force Base, like, you have to, like, have a reason. They won't just be like, all right, cool, see ya. You right. know, like, you got to, like, say why you're there. This is, this is a military base. And yeah. I get up there, and I say to the guard, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Hi, my name is Trevor Sikama. I work for Peter Report. Like, I'm here to cover, like, the John Gruden event. And the dude's like, no idea what you're talking about, kid. And I'm like, I'm like, is there not a, is there not a football event here? And he's like, nope. And I'm thinking in my head right now, I'm like, they did not just do this to me. And he, he eventually, like, takes down my license plate, everything. He's like, I don't know what this event is that you're talking about, but you can go in, don't go anywhere you're not supposed to, find where you need to go, just park, and then, like, don't go anywhere else in the base. And I was like, oh, okay, yes, sir, yes, sir. Like, I'm, cra I'm, I'm crapping myself at this point. Right. Oh, hold on, hold on. And you, and you're, you're texting me. <laughs> you're texting me. You're like, you're like, are you having with me right now? <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm texting, and he's not responding, not responding to me. So I'm driving around this Air Force base, hearing the guy say, don't go anywhere you're not supposed to. And I'm like, they did not just do that. Like, this is a next level prank that it really wasn't me, we were breaking you all that's the beauty of to it. a military base right. to break <laughs> into a military base <laughs> for an event that didn't exist and uh turns out scott was actually just late and wasn't texting me back because he was driving and i eventually found him 20 minutes later after i contemplated leaving the facility <laughs> never texting them back quitting my job going to do <laughs> something else and the funny thing is, I showed, I showed Trevor, I showed Mark your text. And I said, "Look at Trevor, I thought we were breaking, <laughs> and we weren't." <laughs> and Mark, Mark thought that was hilarious. He, I, he, he did one of those Mark Cook wheezing and laughing, you know, at the same I, time. I laughs. bet. I bet he did that. That so. and just so, so many more stories that. Yeah. 
I, I obviously everything that's happened and, and the reason why we're even having this podcast is, is a tragedy and it truly is, but it's just, these are the things that are going to allow Mark to live forever yeah. in so many countless incredible stories of moments that he made us feel great. And, and, and I always, I, I always take that to heart, that quote that says, you'll never, you'll never forget how somebody made you feel you might you might forget little moments or or settings or happenings but you will never forget how someone makes you feel and and yeah. that is why there's so much outpouring from mark that's why we're always going to be telling these stories far beyond just this yeah. tribute podcast a lot, a lot six a I, lot six crew yeah. i mean like yeah. yeah that those are my people there and and yeah. and they, mark was family to them just like they were family to me and everything and man it's just yeah, it's it's we're going to be telling stories forever. And yeah. that's that's something that's that's always going to put a great smile on my face. Oh, hey, uh, uh, Trevor, speaking of uh, the, the Chuck Berry story, should we I don't, we should don't I tell do, that now? We, do we don't have time. We were supposed to look. We started at 730 and we said we were going to be done by night. It's 920. Right. We don't have time for it anymore. We don't have time. Okay. for it. Scott. So maybe, maybe uh, next time then. Yes, we could. Yeah, okay. we yeah. could do okay. it next time. Yeah, right. right. sounds I'll, good. Yeah, I'll tell it. Uh, I'll tell it next time. So. um. That's awesome. You know, I, just like with my, my fab five, um, you know, I, I, uh, uh the, the thing that's hard about, um, a tribute is, you know, you don't, you don't know how to end it because in reality, you don't want it to end. Um, Love you, Scott. Yeah, I love you, Scott. It's not the end, man. I love you guys. I know. It's just it's just hard because I know. We could do this for not hours, guys. We could do this for days. Months okay. even. Okay. Months. We could do this for years. But um but we will we will end it for tonight. I want to thank all of our guests for coming on. Uh I will see John Ledyard. Taylor Grizz Jenkins, Eric Delarada, Zach Shapiro, Jenna Lane, Cliff Welch. And I want to thank everybody for their amazing comments tonight. I'm sorry we couldn't get them all on. But um, I want to thank you. out. You there? I'm here. I don't know what happened. I think it was Mark messing with us one last time. I didn't know if you wanted me to send it off, so I said out. But uh Okay. Well I just want to thank everybody for um for joining us tonight. Um it, we had a uh, a great time having everybody talk about Mark Cook, and uh, the good news is, is uh, we are we're very close to twenty thousand dollars for Mark Cook and uh, and and the the family. So if you can, please uh, donate. Their goal is thirty thousand dollars. They're right around twenty thousand, just a couple of days old, with this GoFundMe. So. Um, there's the address. It's also in the YouTube link. Um, but thank you all. And, um, to everybody, um, God bless you. And, uh, God bless the cook family, his friends. Yes. And, uh, God bless Mark cook. We love you, Mark. We love you cookie. Out. Out. <laughs>